Hey guys. With each passing moment. Hey, how's it going? Uh, I just got out of the pool and my clothes weren't where I left them and they look just like what you're wearing. So I'm just wondering if maybe you accidentally grabbed my clothes when you got out. <laughs> Hey, uh, what you doing there? Welcome to T for Two, the Terminator 2 show. I am your host, your Uncle Casey, and today's episode is really exciting for me because it's the very first in our series of character profile episodes, each of which is going to be taking a deep dive look into some of the lesser known characters from the Terminator films and exploring the actors behind them. In this first edition of Character Profiles, we're going to be looking at the so-called Cigar Biker from the iconic opening bar scene from Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Make sure to stick around for the end of this episode where I am going to step aside and let someone else speak about today's topic. In the meantime, get those stogies out and light them up because it's time to talk about the Cigar Biker. The character of Cigar Biker was played by actor Robert Winley, and before we dig into his role in Terminator 2, we're going to look at some of his other movie and television performances, most of which, believe it or not, were that of bikers and bar patrons. But his first major role wasn't. In 1985, he played Deputy Kobold in the Clint Eastwood film Pale Rider. He drew the short straw of having to play the only cowboy in the entire gang wearing one of those stupid looking open crown style cowboy hats. But he did make it look pretty good. Later in 1987, he played a bar patron in Near Dark. This one's kind of interesting because not only was his character in a bar, like in Terminator 2, but he was performing alongside fellow Terminator and Terminator 2 cast members Jeanette Goldstein, Lance Henriksen, and Bill Paxton. Hey, ever tell you the one about Buffalo Bill? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell, you're all right. Go on, give him another. Just a few months before Terminator 2 debuted in theaters, Winley appeared in the 1991 film Stone Cold, where he plays the character known as Mudfish, a member of the Brotherhood, which is a notorious biker gang led by Lance Henriksen, again from the first Terminator film. <laughs> <laughs> but my favorite performance by Robert Winley, outside of Terminator 2 of course, is probably when he was cast in the very first episode of the late night horror TV series, Tales from the Crypt. He played the role of Jimmy Flood, an alleged murderer who also happens to be, you guessed it, a biker. To me, this is literally the same character that he played in Terminator 2, and I love watching this clip and just pretending that this is Cigar Biker from T2, but just maybe like a few weeks before he encountered the Terminator at the bar. Let's check this out. Upon examination of sworn testimony, it would appear that the state has a strong case for the prosecution of James Flood for the crime of murder. However, having reviewed the district attorney's case, I find that the warrant for arrest has been improperly worded. I'm afraid I must rule that there are no grounds on which to prosecute James Flood. Mr. Flood, you are free to leave. Yeah! Objection, Your Honor. Your Honor, Your Honor I object. This is a travesty of justice. Because of a simple clerical error, you're letting this man go free. Congratulations. the court. This case is dismissed. Your Honor, I would like to petition immediately to the appellate court for a review. Order in this court. Order in the court. Son of a bitch, you killed my brother. Order in this court. Will you? Your brother was a fag. Get off, bitch. God 
damn it, I love that. That's good stuff. Now, that's just been a brief look at Robert Winley's acting career outside of T2, and we'll see a few more clips later on, but for now, let's dig into his character that he played in Terminator 2 Judgment Day. We'll start off by rolling a clip of the film. Go ahead and roll that clip. Clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. <laughs> you forgot to say please. That is iconic. We've all watched this scene a hundred times, and we can all quote those lines. You forgot to say please. And it's probably at least like on a weekly basis that someone will ask me to hand them something, and I'll respond by saying, Take it! Ugh. And it's worth mentioning that in real life, Robert Winley measured in at six feet one inches tall when they were filming this. So it's easy to see why the Terminator chose him as his clothing donor. And the reason that the character is so often referred to as Cigar Biker is because that's how he's described in the script. So that's how he's credited at the end of the film. But the actual name of this character is revealed in the film's novelization. His name is Robert Pantelli, and he ate bad times for breakfast and spat out trouble for lunch. That's some good shit. And he had more lines in here, too. At the sight of Arnie's naked presence, he entertained his bar buddies by saying, This guy knows how to beat the heat. <coughs> After the strange naked man makes his request, and Pantelli gives his famous suggestion, the book gives us a little more insight into why Robert Pantelli is the way he is. You see, he could only assume that a strange naked man strolling into a biker bar must be some kind of loony. And Robert didn't like loonies. They reminded him of his asshole father. And besides, he wanted to get back to his game. So he lifted his cigar and ground it out on the stranger's chest. And we all know how that worked out for him. You know, here's something that no one ever talks about. If you look closely, you'll see that there were several orders of burgers and bacon cooking on that hot grill. And Robert Pantelli lands on all of that with his nice leather outfit that was ultimately taken by the Terminator. So isn't it fair to say that old Uncle Bob probably walked around reeking of beef and bacon grease for the rest of the film? And here's another fun fact. <coughs> smoke in here the fire will set off the halon system <coughs> put that shit out <coughs> <coughs> anyway <coughs> here's another fun fact <coughs> robert winley actually ground out a real burning cigar onto arnold schwarzenegger's chest <coughs> but schwarzy's chest was protected with a small metal disc that was covered in makeup <coughs> so robert winley had a very small target to hit with that cigar. So the sizzling and smoldering that you see on Arnold Schwarzenegger's chest in the film is very real. Robert Winley was burning the makeup on that protective metal gimmick on Arnold's chest. Now the Marvel Comics adaptation of Terminator 2 sees the violence against Robert Pantelli toned down quite a bit. 
you know, for the kids. I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot to say please. Instead of getting his arm crushed in the Terminator's hydraulic grip, he simply lifted up into the air. And rather than getting his hands and face fried on the grill, he takes a nice, safe back bump. You know, it's funny. As tough, intimidating, and downright scary as the cigar biker appears in Terminator 2 Judgment Day, I always thought there was something in his eyes hinting that behind that scary image was a kind and gentle man performing that role. And I would love to invite Robert Winley to be the first guest on T for Two. I would love to chat with him. But I'll never get that chance. Robert Winley passed away on October 21st, 2001 in Costa Mesa, California. And I would love to have been able to research up on him before this episode so that I could paint a picture for you of what kind of man he was and what his life was like. But I can't. There's almost no information about him online. So instead, I reached out to a few of his friends and colleagues so that they could tell you a little bit more about Robert Winley. Not so much the actor, but the man. Here's to Robert Winley. Okay. Well, there you go. Boy, that's a, you're the first one that said that today. I met Bob Winley, gee, around 1979, 1980, somewhere around there. I would say I probably knew him from 1976 um, to 85. I had gone to the Pasadena Playhouse, College of Theater Arts, and Desilu Studios, and, but I wanted to learn more about directing and technical issues, so I went to the University of South Dakota, and that's where I ran into Robert. Uh, I got hired as an actor at the Paul Bunyan Playhouse to do summer stuff in Bemidji, Minnesota. All of a sudden, this guy shows up, and he was hired uh, as an actor, and that's how I met Bob. We did shows together. <laughs> and uh, we immediately became friends. I was the pool cue biker, the guy that whacked on a short in the head of the pool cue, and he grabs me and launches me out the window. I'm kind of... Uh, speechless because there's so many stories that I could tell you about him. I could tell you a lot about Bob. First of all, he's just a great guy. I mean, no you know, BS at all. I mean, this, he's a real, the real deal, nice, super, super nice gentleman. He was just a really nice guy. Can't tell you enough about him. He was just a really nice guy. He was super easy going, you know. I remember him just kind of being real positive energy, you know, fun having fun with it all. We had a lot of fun together, I gotta tell you. Robert and I had a lot of fun together over the years, so. Just a real nice guy, we had a lot of fun. <laughs> of course, I met, he had that girlfriend then, and he had another girlfriend later, and <laughs> another yeah. girlfriend after that, but he is never married again after uh, Leslie that I know of. Oh yeah, the one girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> she got mad at him and literally set his bed on fire. <laughs> she was a little mad at him. So <laughs> Sounds like it. That, that was an argument that he got out of without being killed. And uh, he was a very good actor. He really was. Yeah, his film, that was almost like a third of his career. He did a lot of live stage work. Uh, the first play we did was a comedy, A Thousand Clowns. Uh, he was very good in it, and he had great comic timing. Give me a room! I believe we were ahead of you. What's this? Something to put your teeth in if you don't get out of my way. One of the live stage shows he was doing, it was uh, the Crystal Cathedral in uh, LA. It's a show called The Glory of Easter. It was just so funny for me to see him ride up to the church on a motorcycle and the next time I'd see him, he'd be side saddle on a donkey coming on stage. I got a job on the same show being a stage manager and every night we'd go out Robert used to say, it's not easy getting hung up on a cross and crucified in a diaper twice a day. I think the first time I saw him in a movie, I was turning to a 
some things on TV. There was one in that movie. I saw what you did, and I went, see, that's Bob Winley. Holy crap. You want to buy some mangoes? Uh, no, thank you. He was on ER and, and uh, Soap and uh, Touched by an Angel and Walker, Texas Ranger. and uh, You know, a lot of people in show business hate the word typecast. But Bob was that cast, and he didn't care. I mean, he's getting work, and believe me, work is so hard to get because for every part you go up for, there's 10,000 people just like you in line. So there's nothing wrong with being that cast. <laughs> well, because his complexion made him look like a, a tough guy. So you would type him that way. I mean, he was good at playing a heavy bully. <laughs> he was scary. <laughs> He want, if you want to be on, on the other end, he was the kindest, warmest, sweetest guy you ever want to know. The thing is, it's interesting with character actors, you know. He's a guy, he's got the beard, and he had sort of like a rough complexion. He was perfectly cast for, for that part. But he was a real sweetheart. He was a nice guy. He was a guy who, who was in touch with his feelings and other people. He was a very giving guy. A really fair guy, too. I mean, really honest and all that. When he would be unemployed, you know, any other actor would go down and get your unemployment money, right? Uh -huh. But he felt like that was cheating. And even though he had paid into unemployment while he was working as an actor, he didn't want to go get the unemployment money because he just felt that was cheating, taking free money from the government or something. Even in Terminator 2, you know, he comes off as this imposing, mean guy that you don't want to screw with. But I always thought there was something in his eyes that made me think that behind that gruff exterior of that character he was playing, that there was a really kind guy behind there. Yeah, you're absolutely right. He was just a sweetheart of a guy. He was more hippie than biker. He, he was more a flower child. You're right. In the eyes. He had that, he had that kindness. He's like a, a, a big, friendly liar. But the best ones when I, I didn't know he was in Terminator 2. And when Schwarzenegger walks buck naked into that biker bar. It was just this little country bar out, you know, kind of on the outskirts of L.A. And walks up and says, I like your clothes. And I said, look, it's Bob Whaley. Oh, holy crap. <laughs> Since it was a normal working bar, they had to wait until the bar closed at 2 o'clock in the morning before the film crew could come in. And Jim had to get all of that shot in one night. So really when they were shooting that scene, it was like 4 o'clock in the morning. And Robert says, of course, Arnold was dead tired by then. had been working probably since early the previous morning. And he says he kind of started slurring his words a little bit. I want your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. And the way he did perfectly, he forgot to say please. And Robert said that all he could think about was there was a little metal round pad on his chest that he had to hit with that cigar <laughs> to put it out. Otherwise, he would have been putting it out on his bare flesh. And he says, first I had to keep myself from laughing when he said, I want your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. Then he had to hit that little round thing. And then he had to react when it didn't uh, burn him. And the way he puts the cigar on it shortening his chest, and I go, well, this is not going to go well for Bob. A stunt guy went through the window, but Robert landed on the stove. Yeah, it was shot on the real grill back in the, so it was real tight, very little room to get the lighting right, get the cameras in and everything. And I remember sitting in and watching the scene, and Jim just kept telling him, you know, you're, you're hitting a hot griddle there. I really wanted your body language to really capture the burning and the scalding. So, you know, he was dancing all over this you know, it was cold, but he had to make it look like he was getting burned. But he kept just getting more and more and more animated and more into it. So it was, it was fun to watch, you know? Oh, I he really, he, he sold it, you know? He really sold it. And he ended up hitting his forehead. He did. He got a little hurt. He was going a little crazy. <laughs> Jim pushes people really hard. <laughs> it's nothing that he doesn't ask for himself. Well, there was a little bit of blood coming down his forehead and the makeup people came running in and Robert's like, what are you gonna do? And he's, well, we gotta clean up that blood. And Robert's like, are you kidding me? How often do you get to see real blood in a movie? <laughs> Yeah, see, I remember something about that. He was a little injured, and he was like, man, now nah, this is this is the real deal. So that that blood on Robert's forehead in that biker scene is his real blood. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, and you get to see all the magic go. You know, what wound up becoming an incredibly iconic scene in the film. And I just remember thinking that that was pretty cool, that he was really, really giving his all for him, you know? And, uh, and then... Uh, we lost touch. Uh, after that, we, we lost touch. I never, I never saw him again.
You know, about, no, oh, maybe six or seven years ago, I was getting a little nostalgic, and I was contacting some of my old friends from L.A., and I, well, I tried to reach him. I just addressed it to him, hey, Robert. And uh, and I got something back from the store. I said, sadly, that Bob had died in, like, year 2000. You know, I had always thought about him, and I went on, you know, as the Internet developed, I went online looking for him, and then I found out that he had passed away. And I didn't know that. So, you know, that, was, that, that hurt me. I mean, that struck me kind of deep. Right at the very end, like my last phone call with him, uh, he couldn't hardly talk. So I just talked and talked and talked and reminded him of the old times. <clears throat> and uh, at the end of the call, the only thing he said was, I love you, brother. And that's the last, that's the last words I ever heard. <laughs> I, I think Bob could have done anything. He's just a great guy. And it's easy to eulogize someone that you really loved and really cared for and was a good friend. And in my way, I, I give thought to him every day. For that summer, I spent every day with him. And uh, it was uh, a pleasure working with him. You know, like I said, I love the guy like a brother. And uh, so anything to glorify him is just fine with me. I really am happy to help you with this, basically, as a tribute to my good friend Robert. This is really fun for me to be able to share that. Yeah, that's and awesome. It's so neat that you can share it with more people. It's a cool thing to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. After he went back to America and he had passed away from the tumor, I had a guy call me on the phone here in Denmark, and he was looking for Robert. I had to tell him that Robert had passed away, and why was he calling? And he said because he wanted to offer him the lead in a new TV series that they were making called Sons of Anarchy. He would have been offered the lead. I tried to convince him that I look a lot like him. Could I have the job? <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> I asked him toward the end after he found out he had the cancer and I said, well, what do you think? Are you all right with your life and all that? And he says, well, I figure I lived life on my own terms and I, I've always been happy and successful as I wanted to be, so I'm completely satisfied. So.